Hi, my name is Hans Peter Meyer, and today I'm talking to Zelda O'Connor. Zelda is the owner of Twigs Bakery and Florist, and we're in the uh, co in, <coughs> excuse me in the Native Sons Hall here in Courtney, the Comox Valley Farmers Market, the weekly Saturday market. Zelda, how do how does bread and flowers how do they come together? Well, they come together through my diligent hands that basically love flowers the most and flour came along a little bit later being the bread type of flour and uh, I have been a florist for many many years and started to make bread when people were not buying as many flowers but now I'm going back to where I started so I'm back to being a florist and I'm still making bread because people can't live without it, seemingly. You make a specific kind of bread. You, you call it a slow method of making yeah, bread. So can you do traditional method of bread. It, it's breads without additives of any sort. They're, they're, it's vegan, dairy-free. It's, uh, it's done in a slow method, which means not a lot of yeast. There's no sugars. There's no dairy. And... Um, I have a big oven that gets really, really hot, so I can put it in and, and get a decent crust on the bread, which is really important for everyone's digestive Yeah, systems. so explain this. Why is the crust important? The crust is important because when you have a piece of bread, the wheat is kind of difficult to digest, but when you have a crusty bread, you have to chew it. So when you chew... Uh, the crust, you take time to chew it and masticate it. it. Your saliva has enzymes in it that when it goes down into your stomach, they, they actually start the digestive process going. They help to, to synthesize the wheats. Um, so like we're not going to get this lump of like white no, bread sitting in my gut? Like, no, it's not like a lump of that plasticky bread. It's a different substance altogether. It doesn't even look like bread. You can't even squish it together like a lump of, you know, right. plasticine. So it just has a different effect and it's very, it's, so it's healthy. And, and instead of needing tons of it, you could have a slice of bread or a slice of toast and you actually feel it's satisfying mm -hmm. and it also develops a really delicious flavor like it, it, the flavor is really important so well I know I, I mean I've had lots of this bread and it is really tasty the twigs bakery bread is definitely good stuff so you started the market when it's when actually when it started you were selling flowers way back yeah. then you took a break, you came back, you went to baking because you needed to put bread, bread on the table. Yeah. Uh, but now you're do, uh, growing more flowers. Now, you're, you're telling me that I can buy local like flowers grown in the Comox Valley pretty much 12, year, 12 months of the year. Yeah. So, so like it's uh, beginning of March. What are, you, what are you selling right now? Right now I have spring bulbs that I, I forced which is a forcing is a, is a is a method of propagation where you you plant your bulbs early in the spring in in big crates or bulb pans or whatever and let them sit outside to uh, develop their roots during the dark of the year and then as soon as um, we pass the the summer the winter equinox or solstice uh, the light starts to come back and then the plants start to develop the above ground growth so once they've got a really decent root system then you can bring them into a warmer Okay. warmer atmosphere and then it it helps to force them it forces them up and the, the flower actually exists within the bulb so every daffodil or tulip actually has the embryo of the flowers right, right in there already so, so i'm I'm, I'm i'm gonna take some over here okay so so here's here's today's offering it's uh what is it the 8th of march today yeah and so we've what have we got here we have well the pussy willows they're a native species yeah. so i just wild harvest those and I also do a lot of wild harvesting of greens and twigs and this and that like either for my bouquets and then the actual flowers are I've got there's 
tulip. You're going to have to hold it up here probably, yeah. Okay, so we got... These are white, these are a white tulip. You don't see them really uh, in the stores. They're called white emperor and when they open they're like little white stars with a lot of frilly curl in the middle. And a little pink in there too. Yeah, yeah. they're pretty nice. They're sort of, they call them Verita Flora. They're green on the outside. Is this a freesia here? This is oh. a freesia. That's a yellow freesia. Those are just corms that come back. This, the narcissi are called bridal crown. And they're an extremely fragrant uh, one. They're, they're really popular in, in um, bridal bouquets. And they're lovely. They're, they're easy to force. So there's those. Then there's the yellow tulips. And what else is in there? That's so this is quite different than we're going to find in most florist shops. Is yeah. that right? Mm-hmm. And it's super fragrant. Give it a sniff. Oh, wow. I'm, so, I'm like really surprised, right? Like it's winter now. And you've got... And I've got flowers, flowers that smell like spring. <laughs> That's amazing. I know. Every week it's sort of a different color. I had pink, white, and yellow this week, and and some pink, pink hyacinths. Last week it was diff more hotter colors. It depends. Like the tulips, each week they seem to stagger along. So each week there's a different one that's coming out. So I'm not sure what it'll be next week. So you're growing most of the stuff on your relatively small lot in Courtney, yeah. is that right? It's, but these are, aren't grown outside, like they're, they're brought in, so I'm mainly growing them inside, although I do take them out in my breezeway where they get light, like, yeah, so yeah, okay. I am. Okay. So now the, the big question always that I have to ask is, how important is the farmer's market to what you do, to your business? It's really important because I, I have such goodwill here and I've, I've been, people know me, they've known, I've been here since 1973 and I guess we, Terry and I started uh, Eat More in 1978 and then we had Earth Bank Farm which is a market garden. So people have always associated me with sprouts and organic food. And then my flowers were always there because we had a huge garden. I had a huge flower garden and supplied flowers to restaurants. I grew herbs for lots of restaurants, bulk herbs, like lots of different restaurants. Are we going to see, do we see your stuff anywhere else besides the market? No, not in the, no, I just, I just retail here. Um, mainly because it's for one person it's enough work like I, I I wasn't really interested in being a storefront and I I'm too bossy people don't want to work for me <laughs> okay <laughs> I say you're not doing it right <laughs> so yeah so I d have just been you know on my own I have a little bit of help here and there uh -huh. and um, but with the garden I need an apprentice okay well, what I wanted to hear before we shut down is is show people some of the oh, bread here okay this is because bread. <laughs> right so okay, so come in here and hold those up okay <laughs> so th this is like crusty yummy bread yeah. but I love this one over there that that uh, the that yeah look at that that's one fruit, that's fruit and nut we don't want the nuts touching anything right even though I'm holding it that's so um, yeah so ciabatta bread this is soft right now but once it's warmed up it has a super crusty crunchy outside and chewy holy inside and this is a seedy multigrain so that's full of uh, grains Right. And it's really low in salt. I don't use a lot of salt. And like I said, there's no sugar, added sugar, no dairy, no eggs or milk powder or oil. No, I don't use oil. None of these breads have oils in them. Good. So it's pretty, you know, it's practical bread. It's really practical. And really yummy. Really yummy. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much, Zelda. So, twigs, bakery and florists, flowers. <laughs> Flowers of this kind, flower of that kind, made into bread at the Comox Valley Farmers Market. Thank you very much, Sally. Plus, they got a cheeky person waiting on them. Plus, you get a cheeky person waiting on you, which is worth the price of admission, I'm sure. I like thank you for watching and thank you, Zelda. Thanks, man. I like my food local. Wanna know my fish swam up a stream. I like my food local. Wanna know my fish swam up a stream. I like my food local. Wanna know that my hens can roam. I like my food to come from my home.